In today's video I will talk about fluid along the posterior tibial tendon on MRI of the ankle joint and what it actually means. So just a quick repetition here of the anatomy of the posterior tibial tendon. Uh, you can see here on an ankle MRI. Let's zoom in here. So scrolling now distally we can see Tom, Dick and Harry and we've got the thickest tendon here with, which is the posterior tibial tendon. And here we can see some fluid in the tendon sheath and we can follow it down. Um, then it's a little bit flatter. Then the most distal portion can be a little bit brighter in signal intensity which is just normal and should not be rated as uh, tendinopathy. It's just normal then we've got these different slips. So it is believed and that's basically the classical teaching that the tendon sheath doesn't reach all the way distally up to here but it ends one to two centimeters proximal to the very distal insertion. So that would mean that maybe up to here where we can see it actually in this case. So you can see there is just a little bit of fluid and then we have some fluid up here. So there is fluid in the tendon sheath in this patient and then more distally there is no fluid around the posterior tibial tendon which is basically the normal situation. Here in the same patient we can see posterior to the medial malleolus we've got fluid in the tendon sheath, uh, some here then at some point it kind of stops and the most distal one to two centimeters or a little bit more is not covered or surrounded by fluid in this patient because the tendon sheath does not reach that far distally. So then in older publications they talk about that the most distal portion of the posterior tibial tendon because it's not covered by tendon sheath or surrounded by tendon sheath it's covered by paratenon similar to the Achilles tendon and therefore any fluid or edema around the most distal portion of the posterior tibial tendon is considered to be a paratenonitis or peritendinitis as it's frequently called too. So that's basically what I did so far. I flew it around the most distal portion and you can see we are very close to the insertion. So this is certainly within the last two centimeters of the posterior tibial tendon in a case like this. And previously I just uh, called this peritendinitis of the posterior, medial, uh, posterior tibial tendon. So, but now there was a newer study and I was made aware of this study by Adam, which is one of my fellows that I do one-on-one -on -one teaching with online. And he thankfully pointed uh, out to me uh, to this study here, which was recently published in 2019, um, as you can see here. And they actually assessed this fluid around the distal tibialis posterior tendon on MRI regarding prevalence and clinical relevance again. And it's a really nice study with 200, about 200 patients, 100, like 60 cases that were eligible. And you can see here that it has been stated that the distal one to two centimeters of the posterior tibial tendon is not covered by tendon sheath, rather by paratenon. And therefore fluid around it is inflammation of the paratenon, which has been called paratendonitis or metaplastic synovitis, whatever. So this study, number five, it's a very old study, 2008, I believe, or even 2000 by Mark Schweitzer. So um, it's a very old publication. And I basically did this wrong for the last couple of years. Um, so I frequently called findings like this just uh, peritendinitis um, and was thinking that it might actually be symptomatic but nevertheless it still occurred to me that it's quite frequent and might not be so super important but at least um, I thought it might actually be one of uh, possible pain generators uh, just like an inflammation there for the patient. So what this study actually found and you can read this by yourself if you want to uh, I put the link to this uh, free publication in the description down below. So in 133 uh, patients, uh, so they had some notes here, so 53 of them had peritendonitis on MRI and 70 or 37 had no medial foot pain on the records. So meaning that this finding is frequently seen 
and not symptomatic basically that's basically the conclusion so and that's what they say here conclusion fluid signal intensity around the distal one to two centimeter of the posterior tibial tendon is relatively common and care should be taken when reporting this not to overstate the relevance of this finding so this will certainly change my um, reporting in ankle mri as i might uh, not call this paratendinitis well i might still call this per peritendinitis but just maybe give a disclaimer that it's probably frequently seen also in asymptomatic so i still have to figure this out how i do it um, whether it actually the symptoms are medially or not etc so um, and also i think the last word is not been spoken yet uh, so if you look at this case here it looks like the tendon sheath might actually be reaching far distally so maybe there is also a variation with with how far the tendon sheath actually reaches distally so if there are any like anatomic guys that want to assess this feel free to dissect maybe a few cadavers more to see whether there is some variation there because um, that would be one of the other explanation why it's sometimes such a prominent fluid collection around there so thanks for watching and if you think that was helpful to you then consider to become a patron and support my channel here with as little as two dollars a month uh, you can find more about Patreon and what benefits you get in return, like free copies of my book or free exclusive videos, etc. Uh, you can check all that on the Patreon page. And at this time, I would also like to thank to my newest patrons that joined me over the last couple of weeks. And that is Maren, Rodolfo, Mike, Samir and Maurice, which uh, are now a total of 79 patrons that pledge money every month uh, to really support what I do here. So if you get something out of it, why not consider becoming a patron? What I try to do in the future, and I mentioned this already previously, or it's something I'd like to try out more this year, is actually streaming. So basically having a live session where you can join, you can ask questions, and we can go through some cases. Uh, I'm trying. Off. So it, it's mostly a tryout. I want to try different things, different formats, what actually works, uh, what actually is not just spending time or spending your time without actually creating any like benefit for you guys and also for me I want to do something that I have fun uh, where I learn something new uh, so that I really do not waste my time either because time is really very precious yeah so stay tuned for the future um, I think on this Friday depending on when this video will be released I had one live stream um, we see how that goes and we take it from there with that, thanks for watching and see you next time.